are the West Dickinson study. It's a privilege for me to be here. My name is Karen Day. I'm the leader, lead KLJ's uh, community planning group and the project manager for this study. The, the city engaged KLJ to work on this and it's, uh, it's just a wonderful opportunity for us to be here. The, um, let me get this thing going here. We have uh, lots of people working on this project. Um, some, some of the project team is with the project through the whole duration, and then others are brought in for specialized um, periods of time. From the, the project team today with me is Andrew Theroff from our Bismarck office. And Andrew Theroff, late, later in, in the program, we will do keypad polling and get your input uh, that way, and Andrew will help me with that. And Joel Quanbeck, Joel, stick your hand up so everybody can see you. Um, Joel is, is also with KLJ, and uh, Joel's been spending a lot of time in the area interviewing stakeholders. And from the city <laughs> is Ed Carton. Ed is the Community Development Director, for those of you who don't know Ed, and uh, we're working basically for the city and, and directly with Ed. So that's who we are, and this is our very first meeting. Um, the a um, couple of rules of the road today. So I'm going to have a fairly lengthy presentation to give you background for the study and, and what the intention of this study is. And um, we'll go through the presentation and then there'll be lots of time for questions um, for all of you. And when the presentation's all over, then we will stay and we'll stay as long as we need to to answer any questions that anybody might have about pretty much anything. The um, Agenda, we welcome. I hope, do you feel welcomed? We really, we really are. A big smile. We're really happy that you're here and, uh, you know, participating. We, we see this meeting in a lot of ways as the start of a conversation with the public, with you about this part of um, Stark County. Uh, we have a lot of background information and um, then the best part of this meeting, they tell me I can po do a pointer for the, the people here is issues polling. We'll ask you questions, what's important to you. So for us moving forward, that's really the most important thing is to do our, our you know, data collection, interviews with people, and then to see what is really is important to the community. We have a website for the project and for those of you who are, you know, can get online, it really would be helpful to go to that website. Today we have a lot of information that's already on there. As you can see, the, the, the uh, titles that are across there, the about title, it tells you about the background of the project and why we're doing it. The next thing is a study schedule and it will show you every meeting date that's coming up. And the uh, area maps, on there are the maps, copies of the maps that are here, but there are other maps and the maps uh, tab will be increased as we go through the project. The next tab is documents and tomorrow the, um, this PowerPoint presentation will be there. When we have a draft plan it will be there so any documents as we produce them will be, you'll be able to get to from that link. Then there are two, the next two tabs over, one says get involved and if you click on that it will help you to uh, get added to our mailing list and we already have a number of people that have been added to our mailing list and then it will tell you about the schedule of meetings that are coming up and the next tab after that says contact us and if you click on that it's a form and you can fill it out and any questions that you may have or opinions or things that we need to be looking at particularly you can get to it there and then there are frequently asked questions and many of those are the same questions on this handout that we have uh, you know in the back today uh, questions that other people have asked about this project, why we're doing it and the effect on people that are in the area. And then the, the uh, next tab is a survey. And through this project we will have two surveys. This first one is, uh, a lot of the questions are the questions we'll ask you this afternoon. But they're questions about uh, what do you, what's most important to you, what, what are your concerns about the area, and then looking at guiding principles to help us moving forward in developing a plan for the area, what's really the most important. The, um, that survey will be active through this month. That's not true, through the end of next month. Since we're right at the end of the month, that would be kind of silly, but it's, it's active through the end of August. 
And in the second survey will be more detailed and, and give preferences about land uses and um, uh, densities and more detailed for land use ideas. So that's the website, and I really do encourage you to, to look at it and then go back often because it should be changing on a regular basis. Oops, there we go. This is the study area, and on the handout in the back, there is a copy of this of this same map. So the northerly boundary is is let's see is 35th Street. On the east are this the current city limits. The south basically is like Patterson, and on the west is a half a mile west of the new interchange and the north-south um, truck bypass. So it's a large area, but the interest in this area has come from these developments. The, the city's uh, sewer line going out to the refinery, the new refinery itself, the Bakken Oil Express, um, development um, of Menards, you know, right at the edge of our area, and the probably the most important, the interchange, the brand new interchange, and then the truck route. So with all of that happening in this area, it made sense for the city to be proactive and to initiate a study of the area, and that's what we're, what we're doing. This is a, why, we're, why we're doing this, as I said, because of all the changes in the area, and to, so that we will understand the opportunities, challenges, constraints of the area, and then come up with a plan for the area and for infrastructure and how that's going to be staged in the future. You know, so that it makes sense so the city can do a, its job um, guiding development. Our pro plan process has five steps to it. And we'll go quickly through those five steps. The first four are, are technical steps and the fifth is community involvement as we'll go through the whole project. This first step is the step that we're in now. We're close to the end of that step. And it's looking at, at a, a kind of a snapshot of what this study area is today. To look at, at you know, many of you live in the area already, but how many residences in their area and acres of different kinds of uses. As the maps over on the side show, you know, indications of flowways and watersheds and agricultural lands and soils and just about everything that we can gather information from our research. And then we're doing interviews with a lot of people in the area, people that are involved in, in, in providing infrastructure and, and the schools and uh, property owners. So we're trying to gather as much information as we can so that we can uh, come up with a reasonable recommendation for the city. And these are many of the same maps that you see here. This is existing land uses in the area. These are, are consider development considerations is what this, this um, map shows. The little red spots are where there are oil wells already permitted in the area. Can you see the little, little spots? They're all over little red spots. Um, the orange area are steep slopes, which are obviously a consideration for development. The uh, blue are flowways, obviously Lake Patterson at the, at the bottom of those flowways. So these are things in looking at the future of this area that we would need to be aware of and to consider in any recommendations that we might make. This is a map of crop productivity. We have a map that shows range productivity. And in this map, the darker uh, areas are more productive than others. These are uh, those kind of blue-green lines that you see in the middle of that, that sheet that look kind of like lightning strikes. Those are the edges of the drainage boundaries in this area. And that's important for us looking at infrastructure provision in the future, the drainage boundaries. And as you can see from this, this slide, everything drains into to Lake Patterson eventually. So what happens upstream is, and how it is done is really important for the future of the lake. These are flowways, the blue 100-year flood lines, and then the topography. And this area is kind of lumpy. This is quite a bit of topography, so it's something that we need to be aware of. You know, I, it's something like either the refinery or the Bakken Oil Express that needs a lot of big flat land. There's a lot of places, you know, on this, uh, in this area that they, they just wouldn't fit. But other uses that, that are smaller, kind of a building pad could fit in other ones. And this is, we have a series of maps that they're all on the website on soil suitability. And the, the three of them, one is so, suitability for buildings without basements, uh, residences without basements, residents with basement, and small commercial buildings. But 
This at least gives you an indication of things that we're looking at for the future. The next stage, which we're just about to start and will officially start in-house after this meeting is over, is looking at land use alternatives for this study area. You know, there are about 6,100 acres in this study area. And this is a, a piece that the city's future land use map is on the wall behind me. But this is a piece of it. So this is a very generalized map. You know, everything that's yellow is residential. You know, it's not a zoning map because um, zoning would have low density residential and medium and you know lots of different um, specific kinds of residential uses. So this is just general residential and the purple is general industrial and the the red is commercial and the thing that has the stripes on it is mixed use basically commercial office and residential mixed. So this is the level of detail that any that the results of our study will come out with. It will not be more specific than this map is. The um, guiding principles, which we'll start working on with you tonight, this afternoon, is an important uh, element of this phase of our study. We'll do the, this, have a second meeting and a second survey. And at the next community meeting, which is the end, at the end of August, August 28th, same room, same place, August 28th, will have alternatives for consideration. And there'll be alternative land use patterns, you know, based uh, similar to the pattern you see already, um, that level of specificity at least. And they'll be um, vary in intensity and placement of uses. Uh, that map will also show a future roadway network. Um, so that's what the next meeting will be about. So in this next month, that's what we're, we're about doing. The next step is, is writing the plan, the um, plan for the West Dickinson study area will be an addendum to the plan, the comprehensive plan that was adopted by the city a couple of years ago, and um, this will be an addendum to that. Of all of the things we're doing, there are a lot of base work that we're doing now, but this plan Im implementation and staging is probably the most important. How is it going to happen? the staging that it would, might happen, and how is the city going to provide infrastructure? And infrastructure is a, is a, a very general term, for, which would includes all kinds of things, from water, sewer, roads, um, fire, police services, EMS services, uh, schools, uh, parks, rec, um, partridge in a pear tree, just about anything that city community services we need to understand you know, if we add 100 extra people in this area or gazillion extra people, which is not going to be the gazillion part, uh, what services are they going to need and what kind of timing might it have? So that's what this implementation. And then the bottom line is, how is the city going to pay for it? And then the, the fifth element of our study is what we're doing now, community outreach. Outreach through this meeting and the, the next three meetings coming up, four meetings coming up. And the website, the mailing, those of you who live in the area got a, 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 a piece in the mail uh, that lets you know that this meeting was happening and, and why we're doing what we're doing. Um, I have a mailing list, the contact form, so we're trying to, to be sure that anybody that's interested in this area knows about it, knows what we're, we're trying to do, why we're doing it and will um, share with us their opinions. So we will be able to have a conversation with you as we go through this process. This is a generalized our project schedule. Those, the first four elements across the top are those boxes that we went through before. And on the bottom shows the public meetings. This meeting today, the one at the end of August. In the uh, September 22nd, we will have a draft plan public hearing, same room, um, I think it, that one is at 10 in the morning, and then we have uh, in Dece, it too, <laughs> and in December we will have the, the final adoption hearings. Those dates are not set yet, but there's plenty of time to um, let you know when those dates will be. So that's the project schedule, and so you know, you know up front you know, what to expect and what our timeline is. 
And these are the specific meetings. And the one in September, I have the wrong time. But those are the dates that are, that are coming up. And those dates will be on the website any time that you want to look and be refreshed as to what time they are. In looking at this area, in the research that we've done so far, we have discovered, which is no big surprise to any of you that live in the area or, or watch this area, that there are lots of opportunities for development or opportunities for, in, there are lots of reasons that people are as interested as they are in this area. And we'll go through a few of them. The opportunity for industrial development is really clear. You know, with the new inter interchange, with the truck bypass, just makes it easier for industry to, to locate in the area. Many industries like to locate near other industries that they work with or are compatible with. So with the addition of the refinery and the Bacchanal Express, it makes sense that industries that want to work with those people would want to be located near them. Makes perfect sense to me. The um, rail service is already there. In a lot of other locations, and I've worked in a number of different, you can tell by my kind of strange accent, in different parts of the country, a lot of other locations, the potential for industrial use is just very, very limited. It's limited because there aren't parcels that are big enough or flat enough or have infrastructure available to them. It's limited because the areas that might be, you know, that are close to rail or maybe close to an interchange have uses there already that don't want to be near industry. Maybe they're a residential, single family residential development already there and it doesn't want to be next to a refinery or next to some other heavy industry that would want to be close to a refinery. So in those areas, you know, I've seen them, I don't know, almost cherish those potential those spots for potential resident industrial uses. And, you know, we have that potential here with not so many limitations, so it's something that's a real opportunity for the area. The uh, sewer and reuse water lines um, is an advantage for industry. And then you know, the natural resources. There are lots of wells, as you can see by that exhibit that had all the spots on it, and wells, additional wells going up all the time. So the compatibility with industrial uses for at least part of this study area is perfectly clear. For commercial uses, some of the same things. You know, when you see the interchange and the, the new the truck bypass, well, that's a lot of opportunity for different kinds of uh, commercial uses. If the area develops with more residential uses, then those people want a neighborhood shopping for themselves, or they want maybe a, a new uh, Walmart near them, or whatever it might be. So the potential for commercial ranges from truck stops near the interstate to Starbucks to you know, mom and pop grocery store. I mean, there just is no end of what kinds of commercial uses could be there. Each, of, uh, each stage of development, whether it's industry, you know, those people that work in, in industry have to go someplace for lunch. And everything is you know, at wanting more commercial or more support uses. And then residential, um, you know, people wanting to reduce their commute time. Then maybe they're working in the, the refinery and that, or the oil express, or maybe they're working in some other industry or some other business that may develop in this area, or maybe they're already working someplace west of the city and would like to be closer to it. So reducing their commuting times would be something that would be helpful. There's space for residential uses. Um, the proximity to Patterson Lake is just really important. It's a, a jewel for this part of the world. The uh, potential that it has today and, and you know, even more so looking at, at plans for the lake and, and trails around the lake and the future of the recreation. Part of that tomorrow is even more important, would be. Uh, opportunity for recreation and then just the proximity to Dickinson already to you know, the services and to the amenities that the city already has to offer but being a little bit more remote so there are a lot of um, advantages or opportunities for residential use so we see these these kind of three compatible but very different uses all thinking that this area makes sense for them but w with those opportunities come constraints or 
we wouldn't call it constraints, challenges is, is a more nice word to call it. You know, challenges in every one of those uses includes providing urban services. Uh, infrastructure, water, sewer, roads, you know, the police, fire schools, parks, rec, all of those. It's a challenge to provide all of that. Um, for industrial and commercial, you know, a little bit different. They need the infrastructure the same as anything else. But the competition for employees in this area is fierce. So with, with a, a, a new business developing in this area, they're competing with an already very active labor market. Labor cost is, is something. Not that this plan is going to do anything about it, but we need to be aware of it in our planning for the future. Housing for employees is no mystery to the people that are in this room, that that's a real challenge for people that want to do a business in this area. The um, commuting time, as we mentioned, you know, uh, today is if you're working in the refinery, it, it's a distance between there and where the nearest um, home is. For residential uses, land use compatibility is something that we need to be sensitive to. You know, where uh, within this 6,100 acres is a better place for residential than not. Um, quality of life issues, you know, I've been reading in, in the newspaper the concern of quality of life. Um, if you go in, in the polling, we'll go through those issues and see which of those are more important to you, the people in this room. Affordable housing, you know, it always comes up top of the list of issues that people are concerned about. And that has its special challenges. You know, you go through land cost and labor cost, just development cost is just sky high in this area. And it's something that we need to be aware of. The resistance to smaller homes or smaller lots that might address that affordability is something that could be a solution if we could overcome that. Uh, you know, I've lived in many places where there are half million dollar homes on 50 foot wide lots and 10, foot, 10 feet between them. But you don't see very much of that product in Dickinson. Uh, urban services and commuting time. I mean, these are all challenges for this area, and the, but providing services will be probably the most challenging of all of those and the development costs. We have, um, my part of the presentation is pretty much done. And now it comes to your part of the presentation. Andrew and Joe, we have keypads for those that are in the room that will, um, ta -da. We, we should have a drum roll for this. This is, um, we like to do that because it gives everybody, you know, even those of you who are a little bit shyer, this doesn't look like a real shy crowd, but those of you who are a little bit, you know, reticent to stand up and say what you think, you can uh, click the button and let us know what you think about anything. And um, okay, a word about these these things. We need them back. They they only work for this software. <laughs> they won't open your garage. They don't even buzz or make noise. I mean, they're just kind of boring, but they're really useful to us. So. We passed them out, and we will be frisking you on the way out and make sure we get them all back. Um, our other, we have lost over the last you know, bunch of years, we lost one. And that's not a bad record, but anyway, so that's anybody that, that is uh, watching this is, as it's rebroadcast will, um, many of these questions are the same questions that are in our survey, so we ask you to fill out the survey and, and uh, our comment card and get get us uh, the answers back in that same way. So uh, are, we, are we ready to uh, give your opinions? <laughs> Maybe, yes. We have a, and all input's gonna be considered, whether the input comes, you know, in the form of a letter or whether it's, you know, online or whether it's here in person, you know, it's equal opportunity for uh, input. Are we ready? Okay. So we're gonna have a couple practice questions first to make sure everybody kind of gets how to use these things. So when you see this question, which is, you know, what's Dickinson State's mascot? It has um, choices, and the choices have numbers. And if you look at your little keypad, across the top is number one, two, three, and the next row starts four. We have one question that, that we have 10 choices, and when we get to that, the zero down the bottom, that stands for a 10. 
but most of them aren't as complicated as all that. So you can press your clickers and Andrew will know, he has a little cheat sheet up the top, will know how many of you have voted. Are we, are we good? Almost. <laughs> um, and there should be a little green light that blinks when you vote, just to make sure your vote is counting. It won't count twice. Not. <laughs> All right. All right, we'll get you a new one. So we have one one uh, Montana guy here. <laughs> Either that or it's kind of a smart aleck, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so this is a harder question. Where did the president come from? I did th this once and we had that Jeopardy music, you know, da, 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 da. I, I thought you wouldn't be amused by it, so we didn't have it today. You know, if you're living here, you should know this answer. Yeah? I think you're going to trick them, Karen. <laughs> Is everyone getting a green light? I think we had two more passed out than voted, but everyone... Maybe they don't know the answer and don't want to confess. <laughs> All right, Andrew. This is the answer. And look at that. Almost everybody got it right. How, what kind of percentage? Ninety percent of people said New York, which is correct, and then five percent said North Dakota, and three percent said Wyoming. All right, so those are the practice questions. Now here's the real questions coming. So this question asks, how has the recent growth in the area affected the community? The next no, no, the all you. That's a good point. The next question is, it's your opinion. There's no right or wrong. Um, the, next, the next question will ask about how it affects you, but this one is how it affects the community as you see it. And looks like we're almost, everybody voted? All right, we had 67% say positive change, 33% negative change. I'm reading these for everyone on TV because I can't see the answers. Okay. And then as, as I warned you, the next one is how has this affected you? So maybe you, you think it's been bad for the community, but you're making loads more money than you ever thought possible, so it's good for you. So it, the answer could be the same or it could be different. Or maybe you don't like the traffic, but you think it's good for the community because it's brought fabulous new people here. Whatever, it could be a difference between the two. And most everybody here is happy with what's been happening. Andrew, the numbers? 58% positive change, 30% negative change, 13% no change. Interesting. <laughs> All right, so this is the one where there's 10 choices. So this is, uh, and if you choose farmland preservation, you need to press a zero that's in the bottom. That's, it's a little teeny number 10 next to it, but you might not see it. So this is what, what you see is the most pressing issue in this area. Is it affordable housing? These are, is, these are not in any particular order, as you can see by the list. Affordable housing, entertainment opportunities, quality of housing, cost of living, recreational opportunities, traffic schools, crime, safety, quality of life, and farmland preservation. I know it's hard to pick just one but the most pressing, whatever you think that it might be. Okay, are we ready? This should be really interesting. Whoa! So the top vote getter was cost of living, groceries or gas, those types of things. That was 35% of people. Uh, the next highest looks like affordable housing with 23%. 
quality of life at 10%. Schools, safety, crime, and farmland preservation all had, oh, also traffic, all had 8%. And then entertainment opportunities had 3% as the most pressing issue. It is. All right, as I mentioned before, this is the, the level of detail that the future land use map for the city currently has. So this question will ask, what does the area need most? What does the West Dickinson study area need most of those kinds of categories? Does it need more, um, does mostly it needs more industrial or residential or recreation, parks and rec, uh, commercial? Yeah. What, of, what of those choices do you think the area needs most? Where should we focus most on? We're up to 31, 34, almost everybody's in. The last question really was the hardest. This will be interesting. Mixed use. Yeah, mixed use was the highest at 60%. Commercial, industrial, and residential all had 10%. Agriculture had 8%, and public or community use had 3%. Interesting. Okay, and then this, this question talks about, for the residential, what kinds of housing units do you think the area, this, the West Dickinson study area needs most? Uh, mostly rural residential, um, single family subdivisions, twin homes, townhomes, apartments, senior housing. Some of us are getting older, maybe that would be a big choice for us. Uh, mobile home parks or crew camp housing. My guess is number seven is not going to do real well, but we put it out there because it's a use that's in the vicinity. And it's the use, the residential use that would be, you think, is the most important for us to be sure to include there, not. It's not a uh, pick only one um, choice for the future, but what's the most? Looks like almost everybody's in. Single family subdivision. Yeah, single family subdivisions with 55%. Rural residential and senior housing both at 18%. Uh, the next is apartments with 5%. And then twin homes slash townhomes and mobile home parks both had 3%. And, and then zero for crew housing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no big surprise there. Okay, we talked a little bit about our guiding principles. So these are our, uh, it is what it says. These are principles that would guide the KLJ team and the city in developing a plan for this area. So things that are most important. Yeah. Now, some of these first questions are kind of motherhood and apple pies, so just bear with us. We just want to state on the record that we're concerned about property rights, which is what this first question is. Um, so the West Dickinson area plan should protect property rights of residents and landowners. Do you support that idea? You don't support it? Or you, you don't know, not sure, you don't care? I'll be surprised if this doesn't come up mostly for one, but you know this is a free country. You can say what you will. <laughs> so th these are principles that, that in our planning that we will really consider these things as important um, cornerstones for our work. Okay. This will be interesting only if it's different than what we expect, I think. <laughs> 92% support, uh, three do not support property rights, and 5% are not sure. <laughs> so th this question speaks to the kind of future land use plan that the city may have for this area. Sometimes when a community does a plan, they, they say when they do it that this is in concrete, this is what it's going to be forever and ever, never to change. We think moving forward that it, to have flexibility in that plan to respond to changing conditions or changing, I mean, whoever would have guessed 10 years ago that Dickinson would be where it is today. We think that the flexibility option is a cornerstone of what we should be looking at, but we, we want to know what you think about that idea. So that's what this is. The plan should provide flexibility in responding to future 
condition changes. So one, if you support it, two, if you don't, and three, if you're not sure or you don't care. Okay, Andrew, let's see what they said. Eighty-seven percent support flexibility, eight percent do not support, and five percent are not sure or don't care. <laughs> All right. So this question speaks to balanced growth. So in the, the West Dickinson area, you know, we could recommend that the, the entire area, well, the entire area already is, has a little bit of a mix. It's primarily agriculture, but there is some residential and some industrial use in there. But in the future, should the area be all one kind of a use or should be a mix of uses that are balanced? And balanced would look at having enough commercials so that the, the daily and weekly needs of the people living in the area were served or of the industries? Um, or should we really be focusing mostly on, when we went through that other map before, you said uh, that you really liked single family residential and, and residential was really important in the area. So should the focus for this area be primarily residential? So it's either you know a balance or really a focus on one thing or another. So if you support a balance growth and development, we're looking at um, pressing one. And if you don't, two. And if you're not sure, again, it's uh, number three. These questions get a little bit more complicated, so I'm not surprised it's taking some people a little bit longer to respond. And? 79% support balanced growth, balanced growth and development, 13% do not support, and 8% are not sure. Yeah, the not sure number's getting bigger. <laughs> okay, so this is another balanced question. So this is the West Dickinson area plan should balance the amount and location of future development with infrastructure and urban service capacity. So what's that mean? That development should go where infrastructure is or can be provided. And again, if you support that idea, it's uh, press one. If you don't, it's two. And if you're not sure, it's three. And 87% support the idea, 8% do not support, and 5% are not sure. And question 12, this, this question and the next one speak to industrial uses. And this one says, you know, out of the 6,100 acres, industry should, should be encouraged to locate near the refinery and near the Bacchanal Express as opposed to any place within the area. And there are ways to focus it and ways to encourage it, but that's what this question asks. The response to that was a lot quicker. 74% support the idea, 21% do not support, and 5% are not sure. Terrific. 13. Earlier I, ma I mentioned that in lots of locations, opportunities for industrial sites are seen as really important and they should be protected. I worked in one area a long time ago that had an industry on their future land use map and to change any of those industrial locations to another use, you needed to find within that county other property to designate as industry. You know, they had decided it was really important for that county that they have 3% of its employment in industry, whatever the number is. So you had to go through that exercise to change any of it. So we're looking to see if, if um, maintaining a, a certain amount of industrial acres seems to be something's important. 
and so it reads, ensure adequate industrial land is available to foster f future growth and competitiveness. And it's one if you support that idea. Two if you don't, then three if you're not sure. 67% support the idea, 21% don't support the idea, and 13% are not sure. And as we, we only have a couple more questions. As we're going through these questions, you know, we are available, um, the three of us from the KLJ team and Ed from the, the, the city are here to talk to you about why you have questions or concerns about some of these uh, guiding principles. 14, different topic altogether. The city of Dickinson today has a couple of gateways to the city, entrance ways to the city. And I remember from the, the newspaper's report, you know, asking, you know, what do you think about the gateways to the city? The, the um, response was not all that positive. And we have on our survey that's on, on our website, you know, asking people do they think this, the entrances to the city today are attractive, not so attractive, or, or yeah, attractive, not attractive, or just okay. I'm not sure exactly how it's worded, but something like that. And pretty much everybody thought they were not so attractive. So we have the opportunity through this plan to address what new development along this, the gateways for the new interchange might look like. Um, so we want to know if that's something that the community, how much the community cares about it. And again, if you support the idea that, that uh, we should try to ensure that the gateways are attractive, press one. If you don't support it, two and three. And the numbers are in. So you agree with the, the reports in the newspaper and with our survey that uh, having attractive entrance to the city is, or the, to the community, it's not just the city, is just really important. Okay, this is our last question. You, you should have like a drum roll for this last question. And it, it's an easy one. Lake Patterson. Um, in this plan, should we focus on protecting the quality of it? And the quality of it is, is a lot of water quality. You might remember from the exhibit that was earlier, the entire 6,100 acres drains eventually into Lake Patterson. And its quality is something that in our looking forward in our planning this area we think is really important. But we want to be sure that the community agrees with us that we're just not you know, out there all by ourselves. And the results are? 95% support the idea and 3% don't support it or are not sure. <laughs> So those are our questions, and we will, in this next month, we will build our um, alternative land use plans on that. The guiding, guiding principles, you'll see a lot of those uh, things that you just um, voted on. Um, alternative land use scenarios, projections, projections for uh, people, households, and needs for services is what our team will be doing next. Can you guys collect up the, remember I told you those don't work on anything except for our, our polling, so we need them back. <laughs> um, our next community meeting is same, uh, same time, same place on August 28th. Um, at the beginning of next month, we'll have survey two, which will be more specific kinds of questions. And the next step for everybody here, we hope, will be that you'll come to the, ne the next meeting we have and that you'll look at the, uh, the survey that's online and share with us your ideas or your visions for this um, part of Stark County for the future. And with that, I'm done. Um, for people that are in the room, the three gentlemen here and myself, we'll all be back at the tables. We have in the back of the room some large-scale aerials and markers for anybody that has um, parts of the community that we should be sure to know about 
you know, some special spots or concerns or um, what your ideas are. Uh, you know, we love to mark on, on aerials and if there's um, your vision for what that 6,100 acres might look like, we would like you to share with that with us. And uh, we will be here to answer any questions or concerns that anybody might have and we'll stay here till everybody's finished asking their questions. We thank you for coming. I sincerely thank you for coming. I hope you uh, found our kickoff meeting informative and um, I hope that we will see you just about a month from now in this same location. And again, if there are any questions, we are here and we'll be here till, till you're done. That's it. Thank you.